Um, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about lorazepam, molecule and study. So that's how you spell it. So a brief history. Okay, so um, general information about it is the brand name is Ativan. You most likely have heard of that. It's an anti-anxiety drug that, you know, most likely some of you have taken at least once in your life. Maybe if you're getting ready for any surgery or uh, if you have any, like, anxiety issues, you've taken it before, you know, maybe even getting a shot or something, okay? The chemical formula is E15, H10, C12, N2O2, and the molecular weight is 321.157 grams per here is the structure, okay? So uh, you'll notice that there's three, you know, kind of parts to the structure. Two of them look pretty similar. They're benzene rings and this is a diazepine ring, okay? So what is that? That's a benzodiazepine. So um, lorazepam was actually one of the first benzodiazepines um, ever found. The first one in general was by a chemist, Leo Henrik Sternbach which you'll see right here, okay, in the 50s. And um, he discovered this new class of psychoactive drugs called benzodiazepines, benzos for short, okay? So benzodiazepines have, you know, a diazepine ring, which is this seven, you know, structure ring, okay, with at least uh, one nitrogen and a nitrogen with a hydrogen attached to it, attached to at least one <coughs> benzene ring, which is um, a carbon chain with three carbons double bonded and, um, or not three carbons, well three double bonds and single bonds interchangeably, okay? So benzo uh, benzodiazepines always have to have this structure and uh, lorazepam actually has two benzo uh, benzene rings and one diazepine ring, okay? So like I said, uh, Leo Henrik Sternbach actually founded um, uh, that's a diazepine in the 50s. Um, the first one he founded was the drug Librium, which was also uh, an sedative and anti-anxiety pill. And you can see that most benzodiazepines you see will be anti-anxiety or sedatives in general. Okay? So lorazepam itself was discovered by David Greenblatt who um, actually goes by DJ Richards in a lot of his papers as well. Um, <laughs> take a minute to appreciate that picture. <laughs> okay. So uh, one of the reasons lorazepam was, you know, pushed to be created is because it was made to surpass Valium. You guys have most likely heard of Valium. It's a you know, big recreational drug. And um, when the Rathapam was uh, founded in 1970, the 1970s, it was found to be five times faster than Valium, and it didn't have as many side effects when they were doing the study. Later, they found out there was a lot of vomiting and nausea, um, but <laughs> that's just another story. The IUPAC name for uh, Lorazepam, you can see here, if you'd like to think. 7 chloro 5 2 chlorophenol 3 hydroxy 1 3 dihydro 1 4 benzodiazepine 2 um. Okay, so here are some uses and some adverse effects of um, lorazepam. So, uses like I said, anxiety disorders, trouble sleeping, um, uh, active seizures, including status epilepticus, which is seizures that last more than five minutes and reoccur over uh, like a long period of time. So it's like you had five minute seizures every 10 minutes for an hour, you got it in. Um, for any surgeries, I actually, before I got an MRI, took Ativan because, you know, surgery just kind of freaks me out. Um, and um, some people, even with alcohol withdrawal symptoms, get, uh, get are given Ativan. Now, some adverse effects, there's the you know, usual drowsiness, dizziness, muscle weakness, headache, blurred vision, sleeping problems. Um, one of the big ones is respiratory depression, okay? Which is uh, equivalent to hypoventilation. And so if you know hyperventilation, when you know you, your breath gets shorter, this actually makes your breathing longer and like, you know, it like stretches it out, which makes sense because you realize that lorazepam is a sedative, so everything kind of slows down in your body. So uh, drugs before lorazepam were valium diazepam and uh, clonazepam clonopin. Okay. So um, these drugs all came out in the 70s, and benzodiazepines 
like quickly became like the number one prescribed uh, drug in 1977 because they were slightly addictive and uh, they helped with any anxiety. Uh, nowadays, you actually don't see um, a lot of benzodiazepines um, being prescribed for daily anxiety use just because they're so highly addictive. It's more for people with like you know long-term um, anxiety problems when they go to a hospital or something. Ativan is actually not the first thing people prescribe. So recreationally, the next time thing I'm talking about. Okay, so recreationally, people use Ativan uh, intravenously. Um, what they do is they take an Ativan pill and they crush it up. They dissolve it in solution and they you know put it in their arm. And they do this because if you do it in the right amount and in the right place in the body, actually, uh, it gives you this euphoric high. Um, and when you come down from it, it's the same feeling people have said of being hungover. So they feel like you know the adverse effects of being hungover isn't as bad as the euphoric high you get for a good hour and a half. So the people who use this recreationally are usually from ages 18 to 40, 18 to 24 being um, intravenously, and 24 to 40 being just orally. They take it, you know. And you can see this is the intravenously, this is the Ativan injection. These are the pills that you take just, you know, swallow them. And these are actually sublingual pills. So you put it under your tongue and you let it dissolve. So um, before we talk about pharmacology, actually, I just want to say another thing. Um, these were actually became a huge recreational use uh, in the late 90s to early 2000s. They were always used recreationally ever since they got, you know, made. But er, uh, late 90s, early 2000s, that's when people started realizing that, you know, if I'm, you know, stressed out about my job, I can pop a couple Valium or a couple Ativan, which is not a good idea. Because um, they, uh, they started, you know, saying that Ativan was, you know, um, like an actual recreational drug that people used all the time. When 26% of emergency room patients were overdosing on benzodiazepines um, uh, in the early 2000s. So that's when you saw the like precautions to you know limit the drugs you know whereabouts and not just you know prescribe it to anyone who had anxiety. Right. So pharmacology now. So the pharmacokinetics. So um, pharmacokinetics are the um, uh, are how the uh, body affects the drug. So here you can see something that doesn't look like lorazepam because what happens uh, when um, lorazepam goes into the body is I see there's a sugar on there. Yes, it's called uh, the Raph Okay. And what happens, I can still tell you what happens in the body. So what happens is uh, you take this pill, and um, I'll explain the pharmacodynamics first. So is that, is that a pro-drug? This is what happens uh, when the, it's taken. Your uh, The lorazepam breaks down into this drug in your liver. And uh, this drug actually has a, a longer half-life. And so it goes through the body um, more quickly. And so if you have like an administered dose, 70% of it is excreted through the urine as this drug. And um, the rest of it just goes through to the bloodstream and everything. And you know, um, but what happens is, you know, this drug uh, after, you know, uh, being uh, taken apart and put like this, and as you can see, uh, uh, the pharmacogenic, so the rest of it goes 
to your brain and it goes to this GABA receptor and GABA is short for stays there longer. So that's what, how a lot of these work, but I'm not sure if this, that's how this one works. Because it would be an inhibitor of those those receptors there. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's not this. Okay. And so the next mechanism. Um, now I don't know a lot about this mechanism and that's only because a lot of um, uh, places won't allow it to be released only because it's such an addictive medication they don't want people you know to create so i found this on a correlation website um, <laughs> so the basic um, reaction involves iodine and uh, the presence of potassium acetate and potassium peroxide disulfate as a stoichiometric oxidant it results in a super high purity of like 99.8% almost of um, three acetoxy 14 benzodiazepines, which is then converted by selective saponification to a three hydroxy uh, 14 benzodiazepine, and the final yield comes to be 64% lorazepam. 